All right. Here with uh, Jenny Snyder Ehrman, uh, creator, executive producer, everything of Jane the Virgin, mastermind of Jane the Virgin. Um, you know, we've met several times. I, you know, we know each other. I know you're a very nice person, but how could you possibly have done what you did in the finale to torture all of us fans like that? I know, I know. You know, we have to do big things in Jane to kind of uh, keep the world, is my son just screaming? Um, you might hear my son. Um, to keep the world sort of big and, and telenovela-esque, I want Jane to be a show that makes you feel a lot of things at once, you know, uh, uh, both the real heartwarming stuff and also the the tragedies that happen in life. And um, we really wanted that finale to be loaded with a lot of moments. So I felt bad because I feel like we really were doubling down on uh, on that wedding and, and making people feel all of this stuff. And I knew that the ending was going to be shocking. Um, but, you know, you got to, if we plan out our stories at the beginning and if we can get people to feel upset and outraged and shocked, then, then I think we're doing our job right. So we had to do it. <laughs> well, you, you did, you did get all of those emotions into one episode. Um, so congrats on that. How, uh, speaking of though, how was, how was the table read for that first time? I know, I know the cast had told me they, don't get the scripts, you know, they get the scripts like the day before. Some of them were really shocked. How was that table read? I heard Gina may have cried a few oh, times. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, there were different moments of, of different people crying and um, a lot of gasps, a lot of like pounding on the table and no, no, no. Um, and holy shit, you know, just big, big, big emotions. Um, uh, it was it was it was amazing. I mean, it, we have such an invested cast and crew, so it, you really get that. You know, when you're writing, you're alone and you're writing, and you have your team of writers. But it's very it's, you're inside of of the writers room. So when you get to bring it to the cast and see their reactions, and they are rooting for their characters and and reacting, and you know, it's 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 so gratifying. I mean, it, it feels like a lot like live theater. You know, when we have our table reads, you have that instant feedback, which is so exciting. And um, uh, it's like a big family. So it was super fun. Um, now, uh, to get just off the finale and, and focus on the season as a whole, I felt like um, as watching it, you know, season two seemed, and I could be completely wrong, but season two seemed like a setup to season three. Like there was a lot that went on. It was almost like a transition into there. I mean, you have, now you have Zoe pregnant, you have uh, Michael's life in limbo. You've got, um, you know, Raphael seemingly let go of Jane, which was great, um, even though we had that one flash in the finale where he confessed his love, but that was just his imagination. Uh, you introduce Aneska into the Petra world, but now Petra is comatose and it's Aneska. You know, <laughs> was that always kind of, I mean, I know you have these mapped out. You have mentioned that to me before. Was this always a plan to go with? Yes. Yes. I mean, all of the, all of the, the, the season I uh, wanted to be about motherhood and about that transition into motherhood. I said right away in the writer's room that this is going to be the year of Michael, um, you know, and Michael and Jane's romance. And that was what we were aiming towards and what we wanted to build. And we knew we had heavy lifting to do there because we had a lot of people that just uh, really were so attached to Raphael. And I, I like those kind of challenges writing wise. Well, how can, you know, you, not sell out that that group but can you move the needle slightly and have people become invested in michael and jane's relationship i always was um and so you know we, we had a lot of tasks that we wanted to do this year i wanted to explore what this frankenstein family uh was going to be like and and what jane and petra were going to be like now that they're in each other's lives all the time and um you know so it was all it was all planned we had petrified written on the board you know week one um, of, of breaking our story and, and we knew how it was going to end. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's gratifying to get there. And then it's always, you know, you always want to leave the finale with a lot of setups, you know, for the next, next season. Um, and, and I, I feel like we have a lot, a lot to play with coming in. <laughs> that is true. I, I remember uh, seeing the finale of last season and Mateo gets kidnapped. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And then you get to season two's finale. And I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, now, uh, on that same kind of uh, note, I guess, uh, Jane is a comedy series. Um, you know, it's a one hour fleshed out comedy series, but there's so much 
so much in every episode and in every season that is heavy. You know, you've got, like you said, motherhoods, the pains of motherhoods, uh, motherhood, and and still trying to, you know, Jane still going into college and, and following her dream while, while being a mother. Immigration with Abuela, um, you know, parents that don't approve of your marriage. Uh, you know, you had that in with Michael. The, the, the twins being revealed, you know, being fired from Michael, being fired from work, Raphael having to give up somebody that he loved. I mean, there's just, and so much more. I mean, there's just so much. Yeah. Is it, do you ever find it difficult in the writer's room or, or you know, as the, um, the creator to, or showrunner to, um, to still put in those lighthearted moments? I know Rogelio gives a lot of those, but is it still kind of hard to do that with so much in there? It, it, it is hard. It's a hard show in general because I feel like each episode needs all of these different elements in order to uh, sort of get the alchemy right of Jane. And it needs like every episode needs big comic set pieces and it needs real heartfelt family drama and it needs uh, a telenovela twist at the end, you know, something that, that you're going to want to come back when we say to be continued. Um, and, you know, it, magical realism and, you know, so it, each one is hard and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We usually give Jane two A stories. Um, one A story that, that is more heartfelt, that is some, something more to do with either motherhood or her family. And then we give her some sort of mission, um, you know, of the episode that she has to get her, uh, you know, professor to approve her thesis or something. And we can find comedy usually in those missions, you know, because Gina can do these broad physical comedy and these small comedic moments. So we try to balance it that way. Um, you know, she's also a world-class crier. Um, when Gina is emotional, I mean, I'm, I feel like, um, you know, Pavlov's dog. I'm like, she's emotional. I'm emotional. <laughs> so we try to, we, I, I just know I've got this deep bench of talented actors and we just try to throw everything in. Um, and, you know, we have a real freedom in the writer's room because they can do it all, you know? So there's nothing that we can write that they're, that they're going to ground it and they're going to uh, keep the real of it. And that's how we kind of keep our balance. But it is, it's a lot of pressure internally. Well, we have this big heavy thing happening. How can we also have something lighter happening? How, how can we get laugh out loud moments? How can we juxtapose that? A lot of it has to do with the frame of the telenovela and the meta telenovela, um, you know, and, and Rogelio's world, you know, provides a sort of broader commentary on the piece as a whole. So we find a lot there, um, but it, it, it's challenging. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a challenging show in general. Um, it's, it's exhausting because we're very hard on the material uh, in the writer's room. Well, well, at one event, um, you had mentioned that there are three different layers to, to the show. Um, can you can you explain that those a little more? Yeah, well, they, they, we have the uh, you know everything's filtered through Jane and her family, and and that's the most grounded sort of uh, relatable and emotional moments of the show. And uh, to me, that's the heart, that's the warmth, that's the wish fulfillment. Um, then the next one is a little bit we can say a little bit more arch, and that's the fantasy land of. Uh, of the Marbella Hotel, and that's where Jane would, you know, look when she was growing up as like, wow, look at that, that that glossy, glittery world. And so that we can play with um, a little bit more, you know, Petra's mom's in jail, and people are doing sneaky things, and you know, a more more soapy. Um, and then our our most heightened is is Rogelio's telenovela within our telenovela, and that gives us all of the sort of fun commentary, the chance to blow it up. Um, writing wise, it's a bridge between those two worlds, so that we can go from something more emotional and heartfelt and small on the Villanueva women's porch, um, and then transition to Jane's father in a in a more heightened world, and then that helps us bridge. Uh, over to the to the Marbella and and the evil evil goings on there. So, uh, you know, we just we try to keep the, those three levels in mind, um, and you know, the same kind of drama that I can give Jane, I, I, I can give something to Petra that I can't give to Jane. You know, Jane's not going to have a, a a twin show up because Jane is the the heart and hearth of of the show, um, and I I, I want to keep her struggles, although they, they can be big and funny and all that, I, I, I keep a relatability. Um, and Jane is our eyes in, so she's the one that reacts and is like, what do you mean this is happening? You know, and we need that voice um, on the show to kind of let the audience know that we know that this is outrageous and here's the character that you can, you can uh, watch this journey with and through. Um, so that, that's part of, part of the chemistry of it. 
Now, with a show like this, um, you know, we had uh, we'd spoken to um, other showrunners, like uh, like for instance, on The Good Wife, and they had mentioned how difficult it is. Um, you know, you do have some shows that have that are ten episodes or thirteen episodes or six episodes, and then you have shows that are full seasons. Now, with Jane, you know, twenty two episodes is a lot, but it seems like in every episode there are like three major developments that happen because you have stories like the like the love triangle um like you know uh Aneska coming um like the wedding and everything else is it is it more challenging or do you feel you have enough there that you guys are able you would need more episodes which don't we would love as fans <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> no, um, <laughs> Because uh, last year, you know, the, I had a six-day hiatus, and um, you know, it's a, it's grueling. I'm not gonna lie, it's grueling. And and I, uh, story-wise, I feel like we we have enough, and we can generate enough. I, I I would be able to breathe a little if we had a few less, you know. Um, it's it's hard. It's hard on the actors. We have we sh we shoot in seven days, which means the turnaround is even quicker. You know, we're not an eight or nine day show. We need a new script every seven days, and. Um, and we pressure all of the material a lot, you know. It, I don't like that feeling of treading water, and I feel like our audiences are smart, and you want to see things move. And I, I get bored if we do the same tricks. So, you know, it it's hard. It's grueling on on the writers. It's grueling on the cast and crew. It's a, it's a difficult thing to generate twenty two um, episodes that that do something, that that say something, that mean something, and that you couldn't lift one out. Um, and the arc would stay the same, you know? I always want e each one to be indispensable. So it, it's hard, there's nothing I can say but that it's very hard. <laughs> now, uh, you know I'm a big fan of your cast um, and, and the show. I'm a, I'm a, a small fan of the show, of course. Um, but uh, with, you know, you'd mentioned something at, at um, a For Your Consideration Emmy event you guys recently had, where you guys did the table read and everything, and then you had a Q&A after. You'd mentioned how how great it was to have a cast that um, where you, everything that you envisioned when you created the show, it came more to life when, you know, when they were reading the words, like specifically with Gina and uh, Golden Globe winner Gina Rodriguez, that is who we're talking about, title character. Um, mm -hmm. Does it become easier as the season, seasons go and you know what their strengths are and you know what they can do? Um, do you throw more at them or, or do you just give them something and let them kind of roll with it? You know, uh, both. You throw, I know that this cast, you know, there has not been the thing that I've given them that I felt that they didn't execute beyond my expectations, which is huge and such a gift. So I know we can go there. I want to keep challenging them. Um, I like finding, uh, you know, the things that they want to do more of, too. Um, and it's just it's a really freeing feeling in the writers room because you feel like oh they can do that they can do that they can do that i keep uncovering more and more skills and different levels of comedy and different combinations of people um it it there, you, you never you get you never get into that point in the writers room where you're like oh that's it i like the idea but it's not it's it, i don't think that will play like i'm i'm constantly incredibly confident that they will kill every all the material we give them, which is just like this amazing way to work. And um, you know, we we love th these actors. Are I mean, each one of them is this incredibly kind and talented and hardworking and compassionate. I mean, we have this dream dream cast. So um, you know, we we just want to give them more, and then also keep the line. You know, you don't want to get things too broad. You don't want to you want to make sure that it it all come like you understand what they're all doing. As long as I can understand it emotionally, then I feel like they can go anywhere. Um, and, and it seems like, you know, the feelings that you have for your cast are mutual um, with the guest stars that come on the show and with the directors. I mean, they all, you know, any of the ones that we've spoken to or just the ones that, um, you know, or that we've heard of, you know, stories of just are just so fond of, of the people that you have on set and they're yeah. so nice and welcoming. Um, can you, uh, I mean, is it just a showrunner's dream to have an environment like that every day to go to? It's a showrunner's dream. I mean, the casting directors have called me and said that they get people who have come on for one or two lines who call them after and say, I've never been treated so kindly on set. The cast is so welcoming. And, you know, and that's intentional on their part. Um, we have, I mean, 
directors are shocked when they when they come on set and and see what our crew can accomplish in seven days. It's you know we have Lowell Peterson, who's this just legendary DP who got a Lifetime Achievement Award this year, um, and then he promoted uh, his gaffer, and they alternate now, Joe Gallo, and he's done a great job. Um, and the crew has worked together for years and years, and they, I mean, they're turning around. You say, "I'll, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go go to the bathroom," and they're they're ready. I mean, they're they're just this well-oiled machine. We do we do sometimes 80, 80 scenes in seven days, and I would say the the normal would be maybe thirty five scenes in seven days. Um, so, the, and 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 they like love the challenges of it too, which is really exciting and they like all all of the new things and you know they laugh and it's just a real uh family and team environment and i feel you know you don't you don't often get that and i am just so grateful to them because the cat you know I'm, I'm not on set all the time i'm, I'm in the writer's room or I'm, or I'm editing so to know that you that this group is so kind and welcoming and that people love going to that set that's all them you know and and so i'm i'm grateful not only they say it i mean also critics are are a big fan of not just your show but your your cast as well and um you know as i mentioned we were at um an emmy for your consideration event and those are typically held for shows that are deserving of emmy consideration last year you and i were talking we were really hoping um <laughs> But you guys are, though, an Emmy-nominated show, thanks to your narrator, who I think both of us after were like, that that has a great, sh Anthony has a great shot of getting there, very deserved. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, it, you know, and then there was this public outcry when Gina wasn't nominated, the show wasn't nominated. You know, it's hard for a freshman series to break through um, anyway in the first place, but first of all, is it is it a great feeling for you know your narrator out of you know out of all of them, I mean it's just must have been really exciting. And then also to know to have or to know that there's just even that backing of people that are just so upset that you guys weren't recognized the way you should have been. And even though to you, I, I know when we spoke, it was kind of a if it happens, it happens kind of yeah. thing. I, I mean, you know, it, it's so overwhelming to think that you know people think that you are deserving and that you should be in those conversations. And that I really have not lost the, oh my gosh, there's a sentence and we're both in it, Emmy and Jane, you know? So that, that feels great. I, I get to see everything that Gina does, you know, cause I go through every moment of that film in the editing room. I watch every take. I, I'm, I, I want, they're so good. I want to be meticulous and make sure that I have all their best takes um, and best moments and I don't miss anything. And uh, so, for me, you know, my hopes were that that Gina would break through because there is nothing she can't do. It's it's stunning, um, but um, you know that it's out of your control and and that it she's somebody that doesn't like let it uh, burden her. So you know you you can't um, you don't want to be burdened for her. You know she's 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 the amazing, remarkable amount of things that she's done and uh you know i, I want to celebrate that we were so over the moon for anthony he is i mean i would say the secret weapon but he's not a secret you know people know him and have attached to him his talent and like skill is really really remarkable i love working with him uh, he came out, you know, and we got to meet his wife and they came to the writer's room and it was just awesome. It was this awesome celebration of him. Um, and you know, our cast loves him when he comes to set because we always read the narration on set. Um, and you know, uh, it, it could be a stand in or it could be an AD that's reading. Um, but when Anthony surprises the, the cast and they hear him reading it, it's just like, I mean, it, it feels like he's coming home. We, we, we were like, you know, overwhelmed so excited for him yeah well i mean you know to your point um you know uh, you guys are an emmy nominated show but even even the snub with, with gina um who has gotten attention from basically every everywhere else um you guys can't i mean you're the most critically hailed show on the cw the most awarded and nominated show on the cw you've you've um written just awards history for them um, I mean, it's it's almost an embarrassment of riches if it even goes any further. You know, hopefully, we hope it does. Uh, this year, season two is almost at a ninety percent 
uh, or was almost at a 90% on Metacritic. Um, you know, Variety called it the best show on television recently. Um, you're, you know, we at Gold Derby have you guys as, as one of our top 10 shows on television. Um, and then you saw the other, the other uh, hangouts you said with your cast. So you know that I read a whole list <laughs> of these crazy amounts yeah. of awards. I mean, the Emmy, the three Golden Globes, including comedy series nomination, uh, critics cho- six critics choice, T- the big ones that, that didn't even come out last time we spoke were the um, TCA nominations were for comedy and program of the year. I mean, just these huge things. Um, and then, you know, Gina again, nominated for Golden Globe and, and a critics choice. And uh, is it, has you gotten, I mean, I know last year we spoke and you, and you were like, my mind gets blown anytime this stuff happens. Peabody had just happened and that, you know, that was a huge honor. Yeah. Accustomed to it at all yet or still crazy? <laughs> still crazy and overwhelmed and, um, you know, uh, yeah just overwhelmed and, and, and grateful and also pressured because <laughs> you want to live up to those things. So, um, you know, you, you take it in and you, you, you just want, it, 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 it puts a little bit of extra, like, you know, if there's an episode that's like just somehow not sitting a hundred percent in my mind and I could say, Oh, just go. I'm like, no, just don't go with like, how can we make it better? How can we make it better? Um, so we, we, we're, we're proud of all of those things and it really is a, a huge motivator. Now, um, this year, uh, for the Emmys in the writing category, um, you know, do you have any episodes in mind that you would, you're, that you're going to submit, um, for writing consideration? Um, I, I really, um, I really love the finale. I feel like it, it, it did all of the things that we wanted it to do. Um, so that is definitely in there that I, I felt like it had her personal life and her professional life, which is an important balance for me um, and was emotional and had the telenovela roots. And um, I love that episode. Um, I love the um, episode 18, which was um, uh, the uh, Gina and uh, her, her, her alter ego, Salsa Sophia, and then Petra and Aneshka, and then the telenovela, uh, doubles in, in Rogelio's telenovela that were helping to heal the rift between uh, Zoe and, and Jane. That's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like the finale is the most full one with all the feels, but <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree. I, 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 I had written uh, chapter 44 as what well. you guys should definitely uh, submit for writing. It was a just an incredible episode. I mean, there's so much in there. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but it pulled it off amazingly. It was great. Yeah. Well, thank you. It was. You know, you you worry about how to get the joy of a wedding, which is something that you do see on TV a lot, but always feels different in real life. You know, when you're there, uh, you're oh, there's something magical happening when you're watching two people. You're just there in that moment, and you know, we we had to pick the moments that we would show of Jane's wedding, and also how to make it special was something we were really sort of stressed about in the writer's room. So do you guys ever get nervous in the writer's room when you do, um, you know, when you put something out there, um, like Aneska or like, um, I mean, you know, the Michael thing, some of us could see coming cause there were, there it seemed hints, but from the fan reactions, cause you guys have such a passionate, strong fan base that is just obsessed with the show and team, team everybody you can think of team Petra now because she's comatose and do you guys ever like worry in there that maybe you know it makes you a little nervous or are you so or do you guys listen to fans at all oh totally like listen and and uh you know you're you can't not be aware of fan reaction it's it's such a uh and 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 when you're aware of it you have to take the good things and the bad things you know people some people are gonna love this some people are gonna hate this I I like that people feel passionately because I feel like then we've done some part of our job, which is to connect to people and make them, you know, I mean, my heart was like in my throat when Mateo got kidnapped last year. I was like, oh, this is going to be devastating for everybody. How are they like we this baby? Um, and I definitely felt that way again about the uh, the season and this year. Um, but you have to trust the long story that you're planning. Um, 
and you have to just, you know, trust your gut. And you can't, you can be aware of it, but you can't really let it influence your storytelling at all because then, you know, you're gonna go uh, which way the wind blows. And and I, I do feel like people like to feel like they're in the hands of a story and storytellers that know where they're going, ultimately. Um, you know, there were foreshadows of, of what the ending was of this, this season. Um, and that's not incidental because we do feel like we have the audience um, and we know that they're watching and listening closely. So we're either playing with those expectations, subverting them or, uh, or uh, adhering to them. And so it, you, you can be aware of it, but you can't let it influence your storytelling. That's, that's um, I think, the most important thing because there, there is a story to be told and we know where we're going to end up. So you got to get there. Um, now, you know, I, I did mention earlier that, that, you know, your cast is great. We, we spoke about them, but there's one unsung cast member that I'm a huge fan of and I brought up to Yael and you may know who I'm talking about already if you watch that one, but Priscilla Barnes as Magda, how did that happen? I mean, I, Three's Company is my favorite show of all time. Uh, how did, so, you know, when I saw her at the table, I was trying to, hoping, she, I know she left after that event. I wanted to like get her. She's incredible. Yes, yeah. She's um she auditioned and uh, she was great and she's such a sport and we throw so much at Magda, you know. And I told Petra early on, like, you know, it's very important that you have this mother because then you understand Petra and like what her pressures are and you create sympathy for that character. Um, and she has embraced every aspect of this crazy character that we've written for her. Um. She's a pleasure. She's a pleasure. She's always sends me emails if she's not in the episode. She wants to make sure she's reading the scripts to keep up. And um, and when she comes, you know, to set it, everybody's delighted. She's she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, awesome. That that's a word that we could uh, use to describe Jane the Virgin as a whole. Um, you know, congratulations on a, a great second season again. Just as great, good as the first season what you guys are doing for women and minorities, everybody else in the business. I know you have a lot of directors that are female, which is really great and almost unheard of, sadly, right now. Um, and, you know, and again, on, on your cast and, and all of the awards that, that were listed out that you guys continue to keep piling up and hopefully it'll add more to that in, in a month or so. Um, but again, thank you for joining us and I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you, thank you so much, such a pleasure.